What's up guys, Mikkel here, and things have been extremely slow in the crypto market over the past couple weeks, but something's taking place tomorrow that could actually have some pretty big implications on the future direction of the market. In this video, we're going to talk about that, as well as a massive difference between the approach of XLM and XRP. I just realized two very, very monumental differences between these two projects' approach to transforming our financial system. In the beginning of this video, I want to talk about exactly why I think XRP's approach is the right way to build a new system. Make sure to stick around for that. I think you're going to find this fascinating. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. If you enjoyed these videos, make sure to take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's really going to help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said, though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start this video off and talk about a massive difference between Ripple and XRP and what's going on with the rest of the cryptocurrency market. Specifically, I think one of the networks that's really doing this is XLM. So essentially what we're seeing a massive boom in is stable coins. We saw earlier today that Binance is adding a bunch of new stable coins and we have seen that XLM is really transforming the main use case of that blockchain as a way to move USDC. Essentially, there's a massive push going on in the cryptocurrency industry to create these stable coins. Now, one thing that's very interesting is we really haven't seen that much stable coin development on the XRP ledger. So far, it's really happened between other players in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And earlier today, I was just really thinking about that and wondering why haven't we seen more stablecoin development on the XRP ledger and it's really been focused on all these different chains. And I think I actually figured out a main reason why that is happening. The main reason why that is happening is because the difference in the product that Ripple wants to offer on the XRP ledger versus what all these other blockchains are offering. All these different blockchains are essentially adding private versions of a stablecoin to their blockchain. They are stablecoins, but they're represented by a company. The USDC coin is represented by the company Circle. The Tether stablecoin is represented by the company Tether, BUSD by Binance. So essentially all these different stablecoins have backings by companies. Now, this is certainly one way to approach the market, but I don't think it's a strategy that's going to win. The main reason I don't think it's a strategy that's going to win is because ultimately, I believe what happens is countries and massive private institutions ultimately want their own currencies. The United States is not going to want USDC to be the stablecoin for the United States. They're going to want a fiat version of it and have it be the actual USD, not some representation of the US dollar by circle, and they're certainly not going to want it to be Tether. And the same is going to apply for the rest of the countries around the world. They're not going to adopt a stablecoin built by a private company because essentially that's a national security risk. Instead, they're going to want to create their own stablecoin. And also think about it if you're a bank. If you're Bank of America, you're not going to want to use USDC stablecoin by Circle. That's a massive risk to your business. How can you trust that Circle is going to do the right thing and build your entire business around Circle doing the right things? It is a massive counterparty risk that most businesses, corporations, and nations aren't going to be able to take. So what's the difference between that and what Ripple's trying to do? Rather than actually taking these company stable coins, I'm going to call them for the rest of this video, what Ripple is trying to do is have banks and institutions build their own fiat currencies directly on the XRP ledger. This is a completely different approach. What Circle is doing is saying, hey, we have our stablecoin, here's why you should use it. What Ripple is doing is saying, hey, let us help you build your own stablecoin on the XRP ledger. You control the value or the backing behind it. We're just providing the technology to facilitate you building that stablecoin. I think this is the much smarter approach. What all these different nations really want is their own currency. All these different nations eventually are going to be forced to have their own CBDC. They're going to be forced to have their own tokenized currency. And different institutions, different corporations like the Bank of America, the JP Morgans, are also going to need to have their own internal currencies. Now, these internal currencies, they're going to want to be their own but they might not necessarily want to build the rails. It doesn't really make sense for all these different countries, all these different institutions to build their own blockchains when there's already blockchains they can leverage. What they are gonna do is use the decentralized rails created by a network like the XRP Ledger to issue their own forms of value on and then use that as the infrastructure for what they're building. 
what Ripple is doing is offering the infrastructure via the XRP ledger for these institutions to build their own value on. While Circle is giving value to these institutions and saying, hey, just use this. I don't think Circle's approach is going to win in the long run. I think it makes a lot more sense that governments are going to want to keep control over their fiat currencies and the same for institutions. Now, what we see, and this was pointed out by Anders L, really supports what I was saying. Right now, we know that Ripple is making a massive push in London. And just listen to this because this is going to make a lot of sense why Ripple is focusing so much on London. London is the financial hub of Europe and the largest forex trading center in the world. The city has a long history of financial innovation and is home to the world's largest banks, investment firms, and forex brokers. The London forex market accounts for more than 40% of daily trading volume in the forex market, which makes it the most liquid market in the entire world. What Ripple is doing is positioning themselves in the largest currency market in the entire world and also the home of financial innovation. This is where Ripple is going to work to start tokenizing these forms of value for countries, for institutions, for the largest money in the world. They're not going to provide their own stablecoin and tell these countries, hey, you have to use Ripple stablecoin. No, they're going to say, hey, Bank of England, let us build you a stablecoin that represents your own fiat currency, and then you can just use the XRP ledger as the rails to move that currency. I think ultimately this is the approach that's going to win out. And I think this is why Ripple has been working with these institutions behind the scenes for such a long time. Now, a lot of what I just talked about is my own theory about how this is going to play out in the future, but I think it makes a ton of sense. And I think it really goes to what Ripple's long-term plan is, which is to help these large institutions, these countries into the next generation financial system, rather than building a new system and forcing them to adopt it. I just thought this was a pretty interesting difference in strategy here. I really like the way Ripple's approaching this. I think it's the approach that's really going to win. And if you wonder how XRP fits into the long-term vision, well, once all the big money starts utilizing different forms of the XRP ledger to build their own stable currencies, there's going to have to be native liquidity for the system they're operating on. And XRP is always going to sit in the middle of all those transactions. But I want to move on and talk about something very interesting taking place tomorrow that I think really does have the potential to sway the direction of the market over the next couple months, and it has to do with the Bitcoin spot ETF. So interestingly enough, just today, Gary Gensler actually denied two Bitcoin spot ETFs, but this denial was very early. He wasn't supposed to deny these things until something like October 7th, but he went out of his way to do it early. Now, the main reason I think he did it early is because tomorrow he's going to be in front of Congress talking about why he hasn't approved a Bitcoin spot ETF. So essentially, Gary Gensler didn't want to go in front of Congress, get grilled on not approving this thing, and then deny it. So instead, he decided to jump the gun, deny it before the congressional hearing. So that way, when he goes in front of Congress, he can be like, oh, sorry, too late, I already did it. Now, tomorrow's going to be interesting to watch because I think it's going to be very cryptocurrency focused. It seems like the discussions around Congress are starting to heat up again about cryptocurrencies. But the other reason it's so interesting is because Congress actually just sent Gary Gensler a letter, a bipartisan letter, telling him to approve a Bitcoin spot ETF already. So if you're wondering why all this matters so much is because we have had almost no bullish momentum in the market as of recently. The markets have been extremely stagnant. There has been nothing for speculators to get excited about. There's been almost no big developments. But if we have Congress now pushing on Gary Gensler to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF, well, that's a pretty interesting development, especially if it's happening in a bipartisan way. If we can actually get one of these things approved, faster than many people are expecting, that is going to cause a massive injection of liquidity into the market. We are going to see institutions rush into Bitcoin in a very big way as their clients, their traditional customers who didn't own Bitcoin in the past, start to get diversified into this asset class. And as they do this, these big institutions are going to be forced to buy up Bitcoin on the spot market. Now, we all know what this does to the rest of the cryptocurrency market. It eventually always flows into the other cryptocurrencies. But this is the type of bullish catalyst I think we need in order to get the next bull run started. We have bottomed out for so long. We have been trading sideways forever. I'm really not that worried about more downside. But the thing we have really lacked is any kind of excitement, anything to get people back in the market anything to get speculative activity moving again. And I think this is really primed to be that thing. 
The market has been waiting forever for this to happen. We have really seen the SEC stalling hard on any potential movements around this. But if we have Congress telling Gary Gensler in a bipartisan way to respect what the courts have said and approve the Bitcoin spot ETF, well, I think Gary Gensler is still going to fight back hard about this, but I think it's definitely a positive development in forcing something to happen. So I guess we're going to find out a lot more tomorrow on how likely he is to actually push this thing through. But eventually, I think regardless of how long it takes, whether it's a couple more months or a year, I think this is really going to be one of the things that really injects more capital into this market and brings us to the next level. So I'll be watching tomorrow very closely. I'll definitely let you guys know if I learn anything interesting. For now, I'm just excited to see that Congress is actually putting more pressure on Gary Gensler in regards to cryptocurrencies. So hopefully we actually get some developments tomorrow and it's not another massive nothing burger. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Mickle out.